Well, welcome to the On Farm podcast. This is Dave Howard, producer Dave. I've just arrived on site at the Royal Highland Show. I'm looking for Anna. I was meant to be meeting her here somewhere, so I'm just walking around, heading past the big house now. Here she is. Anna, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm fine. What on earth are you holding? Well, I'm holding something that nearly didn't get me into the showground, actually, because the security staff thought that I was either it looks like a brandishing weapon. a weapon <laughs> or, or some sort of mad uh, protester. Or I was protesting about something, and I, but neither of those is true. What I have with me is, it does look like a placard, a poster on a stick, isn't it, really? It talks about On Record and about the On Farm podcast. There's a QR code on it so that people can scan it in order to listen. And so I've had my first scans already this morning since we're walking about. That's and brilliant. it says, come and have a chat. We want people at the showground today to come and talk to us about their experiences of the Royal Highland Society, of the show, of Scottish agriculture. And we're trying to get at least 50 voices. That's the challenge that we've set ourselves, to get 50 voices and talk to 50 people who are all here enjoying themselves. OK, so the placard makes sense now you've explained it to me. <laughs> That's our mission, isn't it? It's it the is. Thursday yes. morning of the Royal Highland Show. First thing, people are streaming in through the gates. It's not even 10 o'clock yet and the place is already busy. I was trying to figure out whether this is going to be one episode or two, right? We're going to try and yeah. get these 50 voices. And I think we'll decide <laughs> once we've got them whether it's going to be, you know, one episode with them all crammed yeah. in or whether we'll kind of spread it out. people are, exactly. doesn't it, really? Well, the whole point yeah. of this is to be part of the Highland Society's 240 years of stories, right? Because we're partnering correct. with we the are. Highland Society's 240 yeah. years of stories. Yeah. So, 50 voices. Yeah. Starting now? Starting now. Placard just hit me in the head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I nearly hit a man on the bus, actually. He was very understanding. Excuse me, gentlemen. Do you mind oh, oh, if we stop you? Now, this gentleman was one of the people that you spoke to for the podcast four years ago when we did the remote recording when oh. there was no Highland show. Do you remember? I can't remember. Tom, Tom Middlemas. Excellent. You'll remember. Well, good, you can remember. <laughs> can you I can remember? remember doing something, but I can't remember yes. what I said. Well, when there was no that, show that was in 2020, we had to record a pod series of podcasts online because yes. we couldn't be here. But this year, we are in person and we're recording in person. And it just so happened that we've spotted you, one again. of our first guests. <laughs> so I think we should have you on again. I come because I meet people. I love meeting people. And how many years have you been coming for since the first you can remember? The one I went to was at Aloha, and I can't remember which year it was, but I was in a bus from the village of East Linton. I had a bus with my father. And I've been at everyone here except one <laughs> with a wedding in, in uh, 2006 or something wow. in USA. So you missed that one. So and I then obviously there would have been a couple that you would have missed because of COVID That's and right. foot and mouth. But when it's been on, you've been here every year except year, one. Year, yeah. Amazing. What can you remember about that first show at Aloha? How old were you? We got fish and chips on the way home. Is that the most important <laughs> thing? <laughs> Not really. I can't really remember Wait, very much. Probably about 12. So this would be 68 years of Highland shows then, minus yeah. one. Minus one. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good going. I, I, I wonder if we'll be able to find anybody today who can beat that. I'd be surprised, actually. We hope to be recording podcasts at the Highland Show for many years to come, and I hope that we bump into, bump into you again next year and the year after Not and the year after again. that. <laughs> You'll have to think of something new to say, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> You'll need some well, new material. But the, but the thing is, the stage my brain's got to, it will be new. <laughs> <laughs> I can Brilliant. see they're itching to get around yes, these machinery lines. Back. Nice Go and do your shopping. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to bye see bye. You. Tom, Willie, thanks ever so much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank Take you. care. Bye. We're on an on farm Next podcast memory lane trip. We are, aren't we? We are. These look like willing victims if you did they want do, to. They do, don't they? Yes. <laughs> well, they've just steadfastly started looking the other way. podcast about the Highland Society and the Highland oh, Show. Oh, cheers. I don't um, know. <laughs> Can we grab you for 30 seconds? Would that be all right? I'll tell you, come up here. This man will talk to you. <laughs> Peter! This lady would Hi. dance to talk Hi. about the Highland Show. You'll be better at it than me. 
<laughs> Thanks a million, yes. <laughs> Can you just tell us what your name is? My name is um, Peter Richardson. I work with uh, Macquarie Engineering and we manufacture silos, oh, the okay. VMAX silos. Yes, which we're standing underneath right now. Yeah. Yep. And so how long have you been coming to the We've been coming to the silo, hi, hi, lo, this, the Highland Show. <laughs> the silo, the silo, 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 silo show. show. The Highland Show now, I think, for 14 years. Yeah. And the reason we keep coming back is, one, it's probably the best machinery show on the British Isles. We do a lot of shows in Ireland and, and in the UK. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, the spread of machinery at this show is just superb, wow. outstanding. And um, just for the record, we did not prompt that that was no no honest, money has changed hands honest feedback no that is ge ge <laughs> genuinely um and when we get asked what show should people be coming to and yes. even even back home for uh, people we would always say come to the highland show it's very easy to get to mm -hmm. from ireland because you fly directly into the airport and you walk across yes, so it's very exactly. very simple so we, yeah. we see a lot of day trippers coming um coming yeah. over i mean we nearly do you, do you put the silos in your hand luggage or <laughs> do they go in the yeah. hole <laughs> oversized <laughs> oversized luggage but um <laughs> It's a great opportunity to do business with our Scottish customers. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, anybody who's in farming in Scotland is here at the show at least one of the days. And more often than not, what we'll see is people will come along on the Thursday, they'll do their homework, and then later on they'll come back and they'll yes. say, we're going yes. to buy now, ready to buy. We've yeah. done it, fire ahead. So yeah. it's, the deals are done later on in and the And do you get the, the opportunity when you're here to enjoy the show from a more personal perspective as well, or are you kind of working To solidly? be honest, uh, the show is generally always quite busy. But yeah, no, we get out um, later on in the evenings um, and get a good wander. Um, and it's great, to, it's great to go down, and for us it's great to go down and see the, the, the animals, the cattle, mm. um, and, and the sheep and so on and stuff yeah. like that. And that's really, you know, makes big part of the uh, part of the show definitely great oh, well thank you very much for, not at uh, all. for chatting to us just say the name of the business again it's vmax silos thank you so much Super. not at thank all thank you have thank a good show <laughs> this weather is better than the forecast i'm quite enjoying the sunshine what about these squaddies give us okay. your name rank and serial number so, <laughs> so i won't give a number um i'm no, 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 lance no. corporal cashwell uh royal scotch Dragoon guards also you're part of the british army here to your right, we have uh, our vehicle. So we're part of the Armoured Corps, and within that, we're, we're a, a light cavalry unit. Uh, so this vehicle is used for light cavalry reconnaissance or fire support as well. As you can see, it gets a little bit cold if you're going down the motorway, especially in the rain. Um, yeah. There's no roof, no windows or anything on it, so you get battered by the elements. We're mainly here to sort of provide a, a positive outlook for the British society. Um, for the British Army, there's so much out there that people don't know about. Um, like my myself, I left school at 17, went to the Army, yes. and by the time I was 20, I had a, a college diploma for engineering on a vehicle. So all done through the Army, it was yeah. All done through the yeah. Army to it's learn. It's really an awareness raising thing then for yeah. you guys to, to show all of these young people, because actually, it's probably about 40 young people here clambering yeah. all over everything. They're fascinated. I mean, um, yeah, it's an awareness yeah. raising thing to get people to understand more about the I'm career prospects and the qualifications yes. that you can gain by joining the army. Yes, I yeah. mean, especially in today's day and age, it's not all about combat. Our regiment's last year was in Mali, which is West Africa, UN peacekeeping. And it's just trying to get a positive outlook on the young population to try to recruit them into the army again. And I think you've, yeah. you've been excellent for army PR. I'm impressed. <laughs> So brilliant. Thank you very much no for your problem. time. Enjoy the Have show. Enjoy day. your day. Brilliant. Well done. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Would you be oh. willing to speak to us for a podcast? What again? <laughs> I've done too many. I'm overexposed. <laughs> are you Slightly. recording at the moment? We are. Yes. You're person number five because we've only just started. Right, but we're right. walking around the show finding willing victims just to talk to us about why they're here and well, this is Rory Christie I'll get him to introduce himself but you will have heard his voice a few times more than a few times on the podcast but that's probably because he's always got something interesting to say is that not right Rory? More interestingly I'm with Richard here today well, who's the person that helps right. me get all my renewable um, things done yes uh, he runs RHD Limited uh, he's the go-to man for all complicated uh, uh, solutions with a new one. Make him sound a bit like a hitman. He's yeah, the go-to yeah, yeah. man for complicated, well, complicated solutions. Problem, he he he's a, solution. either a problem solver. He's or an or engineering or a, hitman. Or a problem maker. <laughs> or a problem maker. It depends. It depends which day of the week it is. <laughs> well, given then that Rory has spoken to us a lot for the podcast, perhaps we will speak to you instead. Could you just start by telling us your name and who you are? Uh, so I'm Richard Hay, uh, engineer. I do energy controls. 
worked in the oil industry for a long period of time and then in the last eight years been doing uh, hydros, solar and the management of energy. And why are you here? Why are you at the Highland Show? Because Rory <laughs> got me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about the beekeepers. <laughs> oh, the beekeepers. Well, yes, I've, I've never, do, I've that, never actually, never actually been. You. But my grandparents were uh, lifelong members of the beekeeping association. My, okay. my grandfather was a beekeeper, so this was always a highlight of their year coming here. And I've never been. You've never been to the Highland Show until today. No, this is it. Oh, I think that's quite momentous, actually. Oh. Are you going to go and see the beekeepers? We've we been, know where they are. We've been oh, past I think them. You should. My uh, grandfather was a beekeeper as well, so I should go and talk to them. It's about they they passed away oh, 16 years ago, so there might not be anybody that remembers them. But they were they were honorary members because they'd, I think they'd been 45 years. Wow. In the, Wow. In the Scottish Beekeeping and Association. And Scottish agriculture couldn't really exist if it weren't for bees, could it? So no. I think it's quite significant that we we talk to them. I think we need to find them as well, don't we? We need Dave? to go find the beekeepers. Yeah, definitely. So what okay. was the name of your, your granny and grandpa? And they can go around and mention it. Uh, Hugh and Mary McLean. Hugh and Mary McLean. Are you going to remember that? No. No, right. No. We've, we've got it recorded, so we can no, always Hugh and Mary listen Mary. back. Yeah, we will. Oh, it's funny who you bump into, isn't it? Oh. We said we wanted to get people who hadn't been on the podcast before, and we keep we keep. Well, I um, guess we spot them, don't we? They kind of stand out. What about the Dick Vet? I think it might be a good idea to speak to somebody from the Dick Vet, don't you? Shall we give it a try? Okay. So my name's Andrew, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies. Can you tell us a bit more about All for Paws? Yeah, sure. So it's actually a vet student initiative. And what we do is we operate an outreach clinic. It runs from the centre of Edinburgh. And we treat animals of people who are either homeless or vulnerably housed. Mm -hmm. Um, We've been doing it for about 13 years, but we've fairly recently just got these new premises. So that's in the last couple of years. So these are final year students and fourth year students mainly. So they're almost finished Mm -hmm. and they give up their time. We run the clinics in the evening and at the weekends and uh, supervised by qualified vets, of course, but they get a great learning experience whilst also giving back to the community. And what has the take-up been like in Edinburgh at the clinic? Has it been positive? Yeah, very much so. As I say, we've been going for 13 years and it's estimated that about 10% of homeless or vulnerable house people have an animal and um, that it can prevent them from getting accommodation because there's not very many hostels will accept animals. We're fortunate in Edinburgh and we've got three that will, but they can fall through um, a bit of a, a hole in terms of getting advice and care. So actually you're helping the animals owner or, or you know person as much as you're helping the animal with the care that you're providing yeah and we, we've actually have a, a human nurse comes to our clinics as well we work very closely with human nurses so that we can kind of cross refer so it does work very well in that sense we're, we're kind of using what you might call a one health approach to it that the animal and the human are together and we're interested in the well-being of both of them yeah and are you looking for donations or support for it because that would be something we might be able to quickly plug before we move on yeah we have a website uh, if you type in all four paws edinburgh it will come up so that that would be great yeah yeah and it looks like it's all number four paws ah, edinburgh. that's right yes all four paws so that was the students that developed that uh, yeah 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 that idea Excellent, thank you. Well, hopefully you'll get some donations as a result of that. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Look, we've only walked five paces from the Royal Dick Marquee and we're now outside the Marquee. I told you that would happen I know, I know, you can't get anywhere. Four and a half paces, I said. So, uh, yeah. (laughs) So we're with some more old friends. We've just recently done uh, a mini-series, haven't we, with the Rowett Institute of Aberdeen. So go back into the On Farm podcast feed. But here we are. We're with Professor Wendy Russell of the Rowett Institute. How are you doing? Hi, I'm glad to see you again. (laughs) We've only met on Zoom before, so or the the podcasting equivalent of Zoom. Uh, So it's really nice to meet you face to face. And we're going to talk about rose hips. Now, I've got rose hips in my garden. So why are they so special? Well, I think, first of all, I should really tell you why we're working on rose hips, because it's probably quite an unusual crop for us to work on. So if you think about Scotland's future landscape, it's going to look very different from how it looks today. We're going to have increased urban spread, we're going to have more afforestation, we're going to have restoration of our peat bogs and we really need to think about how we use our marginal lands. 
So wild plants can grow well on marginal lands and they can grow within forest settings. So one of the things we've really been interested in the Rawa is are these wild plants more healthy than some of our conventional crops that we grow? So what we did is we grew uh, wild varieties alongside heritage and F1 hybrids, a common vegetables, and we showed that the wild varieties were much higher in phytochemicals and these are compounds that are anti-inflammatory and we know you know could be contributing towards reducing diseases like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease so we're looking at opportunities for landowners and farmers what could they grow in those marginal lands and one of the things that we're showcasing just to show there's potential on those marginal lands is rose hips so rose hips grow really wildly in Scotland everyone's seen them they grow everywhere they don't need any fertilizer or pesticides so they're a really valuable thing that we could be growing now we were working with a Bulgarian company who have produced rose hip flour from rose hips. As you say, in the war times particularly, yes. when we didn't have fruits and vegetables, we used rose hips to, to deliver vitamin C to the population. But we can also turn rose hip into flour and bake it into baked goods. So we can make bread with rose hip flour. So we've actually baked rose hip bread and we're showing it here today so people can taste it. We, first of all, we tested it out at the National Bread Championships and it scored really well. So we know people are finding it really tasty. So not just as a bread you can make from something that doesn't require so much nutrients and would have a lower carbon profile, it delivers a high amount of vitamin C. And you know, as we're thinking about food security and you know how we're going to get our food in the future, it might be that we'll need to go back to some of these traditional things that we can grow in Scotland on wild lands to deliver a lot of our vitamins and minerals. Wow. Wow. Wow, flour out of rose hips. I, I knew you would tell me something I didn't know. That's unbelievable. It's also high in fibre and it contains a lot of other micronutrients. And just to showcase it here today, we've mixed it with things like nettles because other wild products contain yes. other micronutrients. So if you wanted to deliver you know, a full set of your recommended nutrient intakes, you could pick and choose between wild products and put together a product that could be really healthy. Amazing. I think we're going to have to taste it, aren't we? Yeah. Shall we go in? Is that OK? Yeah, sure. <laughs> As we go past the barley shortbread and the hemp bread, hemp, we love hemp. Wow, look oh, at this. Or rose hip marmalade. Yeah, so we've also made rose hip marmalade and we can make rose hip tea. Oh. But it's the rose hip bread that we're really showcasing yes. today. So let's just let you see how the rose hip flour, flour looks. looks. Yeah, so it's got a sort of slightly cinnamony look to it. Um, but that bread looks delicious. Am I allowed to? Yeah, please try do. some. Yeah, you can oh, try Can I dunk it in the marmalade? Well. Wow. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you like mm. it. Wow. Really oh, yummy. It's a real taste really hit. Yummy. It's a flavour hit, isn't it? It is. Wendy, Brilliant. I think what we should do just before we finish up is zoom all the way out, right? Just be useful to recap. What is the University of Aberdeen's Rowett Institute? What are you for? And what's the overview? So, I mean, the Rowett's obviously an old institution. We were funded over 100 years ago as an independent institute. In 2008, we merged with the University of Aberdeen and we moved to the Forester Hill site, which is the big health campus. Our remit within the Super School of Medicine, Medical Sciences and Nutrition is Nutrition and Health. We really are trying to improve the nutrition and health of our nation. But we've realised it's so important now that if we're going to advocate a diet, that we don't just advocate a diet, diet that's healthy but we advocate a diet that's also sustainable and meets our climate targets and our nature targets and that's why you know we work on a range of crops that we think will help businesses to develop their net zero and um, because 2045 Scotland's got to deliver net zero so the things that we look at are always healthy and sustainable. Yeah. Great. It's Wendy voice number seven. I've lost track already. <laughs> That plan's not going to work then. Seven-ish. Uh, Seven-ish. As long as we keep a rough track, we'll know when we've hit 50-odd. Thank you so much. Thank I'm really glad we saw you. Thanks again. Really nice to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we've just finished speaking to Wendy. We've not even managed to leave the Rowett tent, and here's somebody else very interesting to have a conversation with. Amanda, Amanda Matheson, is that right? Yes. Tell us what you're up to, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm here to showcase uh, my research on forever chemicals. So these are chemicals that are oil and water repellent, so they're very useful chemicals. So I'm here to show how these chemicals are in many daily products that we do not realise. Not everyone's, but for example, sunscreen or popcorn microwave bags can potentially leach these chemicals into our body. So my research is looking at how to detect these chemicals. So forever chemicals are good and they're also bad. Is that basically what you're saying? They're good because they make our lives easier. Useful, um, yeah. Yes, the, in terms of dental floss, a non-stick pan. But why are they bad or potentially bad? Um, so they're potentially bad because they're man-made and the chemical bond cannot be broken down in the environment or in our bodies. So even though we will have very low amounts in our body, they could build up because they do not degrade. 
you say it's like contained PFAS? What does that stand for? Um, so that is the um, all of the types of chemicals. So it's per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. So that's oh, the broad okay. name. So that's what we that. really need to try and avoid is PFAS. Yeah, so yes, they're, they're impossible to avoid, but it's just to try and reduce because so yes. many products yeah. contain. So that's how this all fits in then with the Rowett Institute because it's all about health and trying to maximise health, whether it's rose hip bread that you put into your body or things that you should try and avoid putting into your exactly body. yeah mm-hmm. brilliant very interesting thank you very much good luck thank you got so busy much. four days ahead <laughs> yeah. we were heading to the main ring we didn't even make it we didn't make it very far but then i kind of knew that would happen because it always happens oh now look on the right though let's just have a little look at what's yeah. happening over here highland ponies i love highland ponies look at them so gentle and lovely we were talking to Sylvia Ormiston, the chief exec of the Highland Pony Society, in one podcast, weren't we, recently? Yeah, I bet she's here somewhere. Oh, there's one having a bit of a hiss There's our fit. judge, Gillian Doherty, giving out the champion to this year's champion for 2024. It is 4134, Mr John Reed, Ben McDewey of Straven. It's lovely Grace Stallion, seven-year-old, getting many ribbons pinned on for its success here today at the 2024 Royal Highland Show. So Anna, it's coming up to 11 o'clock and yes. we know you're a lady that wears many hats. I do. And today's hat from 11 till 1 is as a trustee of RET, the Royal Highland Education Trust. So I'm heading into the Discovery Centre to do my two uh, hours of volunteering. They get groups of children and adults, actually, who come into the Discovery Centre and our job is to teach them as much as we can about food farming in the countryside while they're there. So afterwards we'll get back to collaring our podcast victims so i've lost anna because anna has just started her stint volunteering in the ret tent so i thought if you can't beat them join them you can hear i'm in the ret tent the sound of babbling children's voices having lots of fun behind us it's time for our annual chat i'm with katrina barkley executive officer of ret you're here again i'm here again dave and nice to see you again you're joining us uh, on quite a busy thursday morning it's a shame your listeners can't smell what we can smell, which is the smell of lamb burgers cooking through the back, and we have some scones baking. And uh, yeah, we're surrounded by some families just behind you there, and we've got several school groups who have come in all at once to get hands-on and exciting and have a great time when they're here. It's always absolutely brilliant to come into the Ret Tent, because you just see so many excited faces, and not just the children. You're quite excited about this all coming together aren't you for these four days in June this is your Christmas this is my Christmas is all at once and I I genuinely mean that I mean the work that goes into preparing for this starts several months ago and in the last two weeks in particular the team have been just putting the shift in to get this building set up so that we could open the door at nine o'clock this morning and welcome as many people in as we possibly can but you, you get to really showcase the charity's work across the country. It's a great sample of our work. You can probably hear the bagpipers going by outside. It's an occupational hazard recording <laughs> at the Highland Show. There's always something. You've mentioned Lamburgers. Uh, I can see crafts. Uh, what's the stall that Anna's on? Well, we've given Anna a really interesting stall to look after. She's actually showing children some sheep poo that we've made up with some pretend faecal eggs inside the, the sheep poo. And it's a way of helping young people understand how we look after the health of sheep. So what better way than to start with poo? You know, you're gonna grab their attention and the volunteer that was making it earlier with the cocoa powder was just oh, covered. it's not real poo then. Oh, it's, no. oh, sorry, you can't see that from here, it's, can uh, you? It's... Listen to the dad joke, it's shampoo. <laughs> brilliant <laughs> shampoo made from cocoa powder flour mayonnaise and we've got some tapioca seeds in there it's not edible but it helps demonstrate what farmers look for when they're looking after the health of their sheep so yeah it's a bit fun absolutely but we got the idea when we visited the Morden Institute earlier on this year with our project coordinators and we're using their app that the farmers use and they are using a bit of science to work out, well, where's the bar graph? Where does it sit within the count of eggs that they've found and such like? So it's a bit of maths, but it's fun at the end of the day. And we've also got, beside you here, we've got a lambing simulator. There's a lamb just being pulled out and being given a good cuddle. And we've got some uh, quad bike and a snacker here and some sheep handling facilities. And these have all been given to us for the 
four days of the show by our, our neighbouring trade stands. So much thinking goes into getting this stuff right. And the, you've mentioned the connection with Morden, the you know, world-beating animal health experts just outside Edinburgh. It's a big effort, a big concerted effort from all sorts of people, groups and organisations to make sure this is as brilliant as it is every year. Absolutely. And, and you know, without these connections with other companies and organisations, we couldn't put this on. It just would be, you'd be coming into a very quiet shed. <laughs> <laughs> so many volunteers here so people like Anna coming in and doing a, a shift for us that's what makes it possible and why I can stand here and have a chat with you so <laughs> makes it all more enjoyable um, always buzzing to come here Katrina thank you so much we'll let you go and do what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> I presume you're supposed to be doing something well, I'm handing out stickers at the moment would you like one oh, I'll take a sticker <laughs> there you go thank you very much you wear that with pride Dave thank you there you are Magic. she stuck it on my forehead no she hasn't <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day take care and learning more about how we can keep sheep healthy and they help to develop medicines and all sorts of things so that the farmers can My keep their sheep. My nana used to live on the farm. Oh, did she? And did she have sheep? Yeah. yeah. Only sheep. Only sheep. Well, I bet that your nana knows a lot about what sheep. What do you want to see? Sheep? Yeah. yeah. Um, so because I don't have sheep on my farm, I'm still learning a lot of things. Um, so that's what I'm teaching people about sheep poo today. Hello, my name is Emily. And it's your little one. What's your little one called and how old is she? Hattie. Hattie's five. How are you guys doing? It's absolutely brilliant. I think Rhett do an amazing job teaching kids all about farming and lots of different agricultural um, sectors. It's brilliant. So they just explain it in a really accessible way and they've got lots of different interactive things that they can look into and it's just explained in such a nice way. They don't even know they're learning some of the time, do they? That's what's great about <laughs> That's it. That's exactly it, yeah. Right, go on, I'm going I'm to bother some of you guys. Say again. Are you interviewing with one of the, the judges? Or have, the horses haven't got very much to say, oh, so... Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I've left Anna in the ret tent doing her volunteering stint. We'll catch up with her again shortly. I've come to one of my favourite places in the Royal Highland Showground, to where the farriery competition takes place. And we're here to get as many stories as we can over the course of this recording. And I've met a chap called Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello there. How are you going there, sunshine? <laughs> I was immediately interested because that is not an accent from around here. Where are you from, Michael? New Zealand. So tell me about you. We're here collecting stories, really. So tell me what your story is. How did you end up here? You've got a badge on that says Farm to Farm New Zealand Tours. Yeah, exactly that. My son went to the Canterbury show in the South Island last year and walked into the tent. And then he rang me that night to see if I wanted to go on this tour. And I said, well, you'll have to organise it because I never used a computer. So he's organised it. And now he's deported me for five weeks because we're doing, going right through England, Wales, Scotland, across to Ireland, and back home again. As a, as a tourist trip, as yeah, a fact-finding yeah. mission, are you a farmer back home? Well, I was a farmer, I was a farmer, I'm retired now, Jesus, man. <laughs> you should see some farmers I know, you're young compared to some of them. I obviously lived a good life. <laughs> so Farm to Farm Tours, then, is an opportunity to take part in agritourism. You're staying on farms, you're no, staying learning what happens on farms, you're staying in hotels. Yeah, staying in hotels, but visiting farms, and yeah, yesterday's one was really impressive. Yeah, but a lot different than the home. <laughs> you know, because all your stock over here, most of them are housed, whereas ours are outside. Although, it won't be long for the winter months, the cows will have to be off pastures, you can see that happening. I wouldn't be at all surprised they'll be building barns, take um, dairy cows off paddocks anyway. So what did you farm? I was home? a dairy farmer. Right. Yeah, I was a dairy farmer all my life. So a very big farm compared to what we'd be used to in Scotland? Uh, yeah, the last one I had was a thousand acres and I used to milk because it hadn't long come out of bush and it was still in the development thrones and um, I was milking 275 cows in a little wee rotary cow shed on my own. And then when I was doing my silage or whatever, my wife used to milk in there on her own. We never had staff. Wow, okay. Yeah, so. Brilliant to talk to you, Michael. Thank you very much. I, just, I guess I just had one more question, which is, what do you think of the Highland Show? Is it unusual compared to what you'd find at home? Or? Well, yeah, because all our shows like this have died off. 
because the young ones don't want to go farming like you fellas over here. Young ones don't want to go farming. I guess one of the reasons for the Hide and Show is to showcase agriculture and to help people to understand what goes on and maybe encourage some of those young people that are around to get involved in the industry in the future. Where are you going next on your trip? Are you carrying on north? Yeah, going to a brewery tomorrow. We're going to the Scotch uh, Whiskey Brewery or somewhere tomorrow. Tonight we're having haggis. <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, I'm glad I caught you today because I might not have got much sense out of you tomorrow. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael. So I went away for a crafty break and a, a maybe a, a venison burger around. I hope you don't mind that I did that while you were busy working. I can't believe but you didn't bring me one. <laughs> Would have been cold by now. But Anna's finished her stint as a ret volunteer. We've met back up. Have you had a good two hours? I've had a really good two hours actually. Yeah, I always find it quite uplifting to to do a stint like that with on the ret stand because every single kid leaves um, having learnt something. It's just really. Yeah, really nice to to hear and to see that and for it to be reinforced that what farming does is actually really interesting to other people. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. It was was really good. Yeah, it was really good. So actually we're (laughs) heading off to the right, aren't we? Oh, who's this? (laughs) No photos, no photos. For my real real (laughs) winter. Oh, thanks. Well, since we've caught you, uh, you might want to chat to us. Would you like to? Will you edit out if I say gosh? <laughs> Last time I got such a hammering was saying gosh. As long as it gets edited out when I say absolutely. <laughs> you do say that a lot. So yeah, just uh, who you are and why you're here. We're harvesting stories. So harvesting what's your story? Stories. My name is Lucy Laidlaw and I am a communications and marketing specialist but also sit on the board of Scottish Land and Estates. Do you know my highlight so far is I went to um, the Farmers Club dinner last night and quite often you sit next to the same people that you've sat next to at lots of different events over the years and I sat next to a wonderful woman and I'll, I'll, I'll name her, Moira Ooh. Land, um, who was telling me that she was a dentist by trade, she used to go around uh-huh. schools and, and check everyone's teeth and when she was 55 she decided she wanted to start farming. It had always been what she wanted to do and she uh, went and saw Jimmy McLean from uh, RBS oh, yes. and he drove her up to Edinburgh for a meeting and she got the money to buy her farm and she planted it up as a um, wild flower fields and she's not that long sold the farm but she was so passionate it was really inspiring actually spending a lot of time with the same people and this brand new voice is fab and the fact that she's made that happen and she wasn't just born into it she was something that she long aspired to do and she's done it yeah that's that she lives nearby so she still is in touch with the people who have bought the the, and she said they've not changed anything that she did so actually she was feeling pretty buoyed by that as well and it was just it was a really lovely moment she was a very interesting lady Lucy, thank you so much. See you later. Hi, Lottie. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, oh, look, a gold tractor. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Or is that, uh, is that copper? I don't know. I wonder. Do you want to find another... Willing, willing victim. victim? Let's get you guys to introduce yourselves, OK? So, um, my name is and I am. Tell us where you're a pupil at school. Uh, my name's Abdul Rahim. Well, I'm from Nungston. Last year of high school. My name is Romeo, like as in Romeo and Juliet. I live in Livingston and I go to St. Margaret's Academy. I'm in my last year of high school as well. So it's your first time at the show, both of you. You've come on a school trip. Now you're here, do you think it is a good idea? Yeah, 100%. There's a lot of things to do. Um, get to miss a lot of classes, but yeah, it's actually fun, yeah. So, so what, what have you, where have you been? What have you seen? What have you, what have you looked at? Looked um, at tractors. Um, what else do we look at? Cars, motor- cars motorbikes. Uh, we went. We, we took a lot of samples. I have used that so much. I had so many. I'm so yeah. full. So, you, vehicles are obviously your thing. You've looked at tractors and cars and stuff. Yeah. And then I'm sensing that you've been to the food hall, have yeah. you? Yeah. Um, what yeah. did you think of the food hall? Cause you the know what? It was hall, actually quite good. It was quite good. Yeah, the food hall is, is a showcase for Scottish produce. Yeah. So, did you enjoy it? Yeah. I enjoyed yeah. It. What did, can you remember any of the stuff that you sampled? I had burger, I had steak. It's like barbecue and like meat kind of thing. It was so good. And when you go home again, do you think it will make you think about where what you eat comes from? Like, are you going to think about, oh, actually, I'd, I'd rather eat a Scottish burger than a burger that's been imported from 
the other side of the world or is that not really on your radar? Not really. Not not really, really not mm. No, I don't really think about where my food comes no. from often. No. Interesting. Interesting. What about jobs, guys? Because you've seen the people here, you've seen people here that work on farms, you've seen people that are working in kitchens. Is there anything that's been kind of inspiring or anything you might not have thought about before? I think I have a bit more respect for like people that like have like do these kind of things because I don't really like think about like the process that goes into like making food. Often I kind of just like eat my food and just, eat like, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah I think yeah. I have gained a bit more respect for people that work in like farms and stuff like that. I good, like that it? sentence. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. Yeah, well, I'm glad you've both have had a good day and. Um, guys, thank you. Thank you very much again. for stopping us for a chat. It's yeah, been great yeah. to speak to you. you. Oh, I hope really? you guys thank have you. a good day as well. Thank, thank you, you. Nice. Abdul, Romeo. Thanks so much. Where should we head to next, then, Dave? Should I we go don't see know. I tell you another game we could play today. We could oh, play yeah. a game of count the mullet, because there's lots of mullets <laughs> at the Highlands show. Yeah. I asked you a couple of questions for our podcast. Yeah. We're working with the Highland show to create uh, a series of podcasts, and we're getting 50 voices at the show today, of 50 people who are at the show to ask them why they're here and what they enjoy about it. And we spotted you because we did a podcast episode with Doddy uh, not long before he died. And so it's uh, kind of reminded us of well, him. A friend and myself are doing a sponsored bike ride from Land's End to John O'Groats just now. Are you? Wow. So we're two days off t- today and tomorrow to come to the show. So. Oh my goodness, so you're in the middle of it at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. are you going up or down? You're going, going Land's up. End to John O'Groats? Yes. Sir. Right. Oh That's uphill goodness, though, so you don't want to do that. That's <laughs> uphill. <laughs> so do you come to the show most years anyway? But this year you've, you're kind of integrating it into your mammoth cycle. Yeah, yeah. we'll try, try to raise a few more pounds for the sponsorship here at the show. Quite but right. We've been, we've been to the show for many, many years, yeah. consecutive years. So are so. you from a farming stock then? Well, it, yes. Been in agricultural, you know, ever ever since ever really. But latterly, I was managing the HPS ring, which is a machinery ring up in Inverness. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. And Mary also worked for for the ring as well. So. Right, so you've got that connection, and then this year it's important for fundraising. And, and my name's Audrey Foundation. I've been great um, in support before we left home and on on the road as well. So we wanted to come and, and see those guys wow. um, while we were here. Yeah. And, and different companies are doing bits of. PR for us. So do you have your own Just Giving or some or page? Just Giving page. You better tell us what that is then in case listeners okay. want to donate. It's, oh, it's or a long one. You need to one. Google to you find need to it. Google. It's www.justgiving.com forward slash team forward slash Jimmy and Alan cycle the jog 2024. So it's quite a long one. <laughs> I, I think people have to donate purely because you are so impressive to have memorised that so well. So please, yeah, I could, if you're I listening, remember that anyway. <laughs> that's what you've got here with you. <laughs> well, in time-honoured podcast fashion, we'll make sure that web link is in the show notes yes, thank you for this will. episode. Absolutely, so absolutely. yeah, yeah. Oh well, thank you so much, both of you. Well no, no. done for your fundraising, and yeah, do do have a listen to yourselves back in a few weeks' time. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> you. Good thank luck, you. guys. Thank you very much. And I don't care who you are, that sound's always going to send shivers down your spine, oh, isn't it? Oh, totally. I know. I just had to video it for my younger daughter because she's learning to play and she's absolutely obsessed, so she'll want to watch that video. May we borrow you for a few minutes? There's this chap here. Talking. All right. Yeah. Sorry. My name is Lyle Laird. I'm a director on Russ. Yeah. No. So we just want to really just talk to you about the show. Why is it so important? Why do you volunteer your time? Well, I've been coming to the show and participating in the trade stands for the last 40 years. So wow. I thought it was time to give something back to the show. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, and I got asked to be the Bagmas um, representative on the boards. I mean, I took oh, that okay. on because the, yes. the previous chap uh, had to retire. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I took that as a bit of an honour. So your association with the show is, is and goes the society to, is long-lasting. It 1982. We yes. did my f- first show here. Yeah. yeah. You feel as though you, the show and the society has given you a lot over the years and yeah. now you're giving back. Yeah. Spot on. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. Oh, my sign's being taken by the wind again. Goodness. My name is Debs Roberts and I am the manager at Sopa Scottish Organic Producers Association. 
So, Debs, I have seen you at the Highland Show many a year. Uh, we're standing in the Sopa Marquee at the moment. So tell us a bit more about why it's important for Sopa to be here, why you have this tent. And then, if you like, we'd love also to hear why the Highland Show means something to you as a person rather than just as a representative. Sopa as an organisation is a membership organisation, so this is really the hub and the place for our organic members who are farmers and food processes in Scotland uh, to come in and say hi. Everybody knows we're here um, and we have a cup of tea and a chat and everybody comes and catches up. So it's, it's actually just like the place for organic chat at the show. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a wonderful showcase behind you of organic produce, yeah. uh, wonderful uh, cold pressed organic rapeseed oil, flour, eggs, uh, ale, Gin, milk, I mean, dairy, potatoes, potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything you can We've think of. We've got some really. fantastic members, and they, they, all of this is brought in by our members, so it's produced by Scottish organic farmers. Yeah, so they're great guys. And I think if you've got cottage cheese somewhere, yeah, that was a favourite of mine. Yeah, oh, there I it know. is, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really lovely for people to see what what's there and yeah. what the choices are yeah. and as you say for you to also meet with your members who you might not have seen since last year yeah, if they're miles right. away I mean, we're speaking to them a lot on the phone mm. but this is in person and yes. actually you can't underestimate how important that is to actually have a chat with somebody yes. and and just be that physical presence you know it's not the same as speaking on the phone it's just how stuff comes into the conversation and you never know where mm. that's going to go so it's really valuable it sort of multiplies the whole yeah. impact I think yeah. but the other really th- good thing that we do here is anybody who's interested in organic farming can pop in so Mm -hmm. we've already spent a couple of hours chatting with people almost on a one-to-one private consultation basis so it's it's so much easier to do that in person where you can talk about the little intricacies of their farm and how it might adapt to to convert to organic so it's a it's a really valuable way to get through right to the nitty-gritty of what it means to be organic yeah Yeah. well Um, thank you very much you're very welcome Hi, my name is Becky McCangus and I am an equine showing competitor here at the Highland Show. Wow, so Becky, I, I'm quite horsey, but I've never shown at the Highland Show. Tell me a bit more about what that involves, because it's quite a serious thing. Yeah, it takes a lot of preparation. Um, the horse I show is a big coloured gypsy cob with lots and lots of hair, so it takes lots of preparation, lots of bathing, lots of preening. But the, the show that I do is a horse of the year show qualifier, so it's the only qualifier that the coloured horses get in Scotland, so it's quite well contested. So we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of expectation on our oh shoulders. So Huge amount of hard work. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually relying on, um, I'm working here all week this week, so I'm relying on my husband to do all the preening and to bring wow. him down here so <laughs> is he horsey as well or only not really through you? only through me so um wow. yeah he did it last year and did a sterling job so yeah so the big question we've been asking everybody is what does the highland show mean for you what it means for you is a huge opportunity uh, and a huge amount of pressure as yeah, well absolutely and i think I mean, I'm from England. I've only lived in Scotland for the last 10 years. But for me, it's the biggest show in the agricultural slash equine calendar in in the country um, for the year. And just make the most of it. And I mean, there is a lot of pressure because it is a big qualifier for another big, big show. But yeah, you have to just enjoy it. Take your time to take it all in and you rise to the occasion because you only get the opportunity Mm. once a year. So, yes, well... Good luck. I hope he behaves himself. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and the horse. And, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Lovely yeah. to speak to you. Thank Good you luck. So Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lovely to you. speak to you. <laughs> okay. Well end of the Thursday of the show end of day one yes and Dave you told me you're already exhausted so I hope you're gonna (laughs) have a good night's sleep tonight because we've got another one of these days tomorrow but I think we've had a good day we planned to count everybody very (laughs) clearly which we've not done but we think we've got 20 odd ish voices already at the end of day one and we've got the whole of tomorrow to capture the rest we think we're getting a brilliant cross-section of people we've heard some lovely stories i particularly loved those schoolboys who said that they've got a, a new appreciation for food and farming which i thought was lovely so we've had a really good day yeah i have to say um, to you they said that while holding a blue slushy uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but he did remember he talked a lot about steak and all sorts of yummy Scottish produce. So I think he's yeah, you're right. He's you're got right. the farming message. I should he? be less cynical. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Anna, it's been a lovely day. Well done. Yeah, it's Thank been you very really much. Good. Thank you for coming. We'll put our comfy shoes on again for tomorrow. I think the weather's going to be even nicer actually, so we can just pound the streets of the show and get more people to to chat to us. And I think where we need to be tomorrow is the rings, the main rings, maybe the yes. cattle lines. Yes. And as yeah. I said right at the beginning, we still haven't made it over to the traditional crafts area. No, we haven't so actually made it. There's a lot to cover. We haven't made it very far because we keep stopping to speak to people. But see. yeah, tomorrow we'll start at the bottom and work up, shall we? All right. Um, and see how we get on. Who makes On Farm, Anna? On Farm is made by the lovely people at Seen and Heard PR and Marketing. So as well as the podcast, we also build brands, websites, we do social media, and we also have On Record, which is a memory capturing audio initiative. So if you have family members who've got an amazing story to tell, you need On Record. So you can go to onrecordmemories.co.uk. But thank you for listening, and we'll be back next week. With the second half of the 50 Indeed. Voices from yes. the Highland Show. Yes.